So one of our unbending life rules is don't get involved in things you don't understand. Don't take sides in arguments you don't really get. Um, but we violate it all the time, of course, because sometimes something really interesting happens and you just have to kind of wait in and see what it's about. That's exactly what's happening in golf right now. And as we should just say at the outset, we are not taking sides in this. But one of the biggest controversies in sports in many years is taking place between the PGA Tour and an upstart tour called Live. Now, we watched this happen. We didn't know exactly what to make of it, but it seemed interesting. Lots of drama in one of America's top sports, a sport with a storied history. So we decided to go to Trump Bedminster, the golf club yesterday in New Jersey, and find out what was happening. While there, we talked to one of the best golfers in the history of sport, who's now the commissioner of Live International, and asked him, why are you doing this exactly? That would be Greg Norman. Here's part of our conversation with him. What is the business model? I mean, you're, you're not signing your players to an exclusivity contract at all. They can play wherever yeah. they, else they want. Yeah. There are no TV rights at this point. You're streaming it for free. Yeah. They're putting a huge amount of money into it. That's obvious just from sitting here. So how does the revenue arrive? Well, the revenue will come in once we launch the league, right? This year is a startup. Yes. Right? Because, quite honestly, back in February when we were ready to start up, there was a few obstacles thrown in our way from the PGA Tour. And so we had to pull our reins back a little bit. For our viewers who aren't following it, can you give us a sense of those obstacles? Well, that's when the book came out about Phil Mickelson. There was some, Phil Mickelson made some not so complimentary remarks about um, the Saudi, Saudi, where the money came from and Saudi Arabia, and then the snowball and create a bit of a dominoes or a scary effect, and the PGA Tour came in, and they obviously you know, did the right thing and trying to protect their monopoly, came in and the, the players backed off a little bit. So we had to regroup. We're ready to sign the next week. We're ready to sign multiple players and launch the league. So we decided to take a step back, analyze the situation. We knew our model was the way it was. We knew our investor was still there. He wasn't going anywhere. The money was in the bank, right? So we just made a, an adjustment. And we worked around every obstacle that's been thrown in our path. So we came up with the invitational series to beta test lifts, yes. right? Now, with the fans, Tucker, we did a survey for nearly 12 months around the world, asking fans from different tours, what are they like and what are they missing? And they came up, it was overwhelmingly more fan engagement, right? More yeah. fan experiences uh, and team sport. Give us more teams. And that's, we built the model around that. And our model, Tucker, is 100% built around the golf ecosystem from the ground up. So we're not trying to des destroy the PGA Tour or the European Tour. We're there to work within the ecosystem to show that it's big enough space. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, right? Billions and billions of dollars in the game of golf. Why would sponsors drop golfers for participating in live? Tucker, that blows my mind. And sponsors, by the way, who spend billions of dollars in Saudi Arabia. The PGA Tour. <laughs> well, that's, right? a, that's a good point. Right? The Can you P give us examples? I'll I'm give you a prime example. The PGA Tour, I think, has about 27 sponsors on the PGA Tour, do 40 plus billion dollars worth of business on an annual basis in Saudi Arabia. Now, why doesn't the PGA Tour call the, the CEOs of each and one of those organizations, oh, sorry, we can't do business with you because you're doing business with Saudi Arabia? Why are they picking on the professional golfers? Why? The male professional golfers. Females, the LPGA Tour, is sponsored by Aramco, right? Literally? Literally. The largest sponsor of women's golf in the world is Aramco. That not one word has been said about them, right? But why is it why is it on the guys? Why are we the ogres? What have we done wrong? We're independent contractors. We have a right to go play wherever we want in the world for whatever we want. So what do you think that's about? It's clearly not about principle, obviously. So what is it about? It's a monopoly. They just want to shut us down whatever way they can, right? So they'll use whatever leverage point they can to shut us down. And they're not. They're not going to shut us down because the product's speaking for itself. We have my phone um, almost on a daily basis gets 
calls every day from players. One in, I want in. Can I? How can I join Live? Can I? I tell them I'm so sorry the shop is closed. So the list gets longer and longer and longer for the players who want to come in, which again is a testament to the the right white noise. Why is it so offensive to some American golf fans that you're doing this? What are they mad about? Do you? Think? I don't know. I really don't care. Quite honestly, I just love the game of golf so much, and I just want to grow the game of golf and. And we at LIV see that opportunity. We at LIV see it not just for the men, but for the women. We at LIV see it for NCAA and younger generations. We at LIV see it as a pathway to opportunities for these kids to experience a, a new world out there. LIV is the future of golf. And it's in more, it's just, that's a very simple phrase and comment, but is LIV is the future of golf because you, have, you don't see what we see in the future. You don't see what we want to invest in the future. CSR programs, education programs, all this stuff that's out there that we want to get involved with for golf and growing the game of golf. So you keep reading that you offered Tiger Woods seven, eight hundred billion dollars, some mm -hmm. unknown number to join Liv. Is that true? That number was out there before I became CEO. So that number's been out there, yes. Yeah. And look, it, Tiger's a needle mover, right? Yeah. So, of course, you're going to look at the best of the best, you know. So, um, they had originally approached Tiger before I became CEO. So, yes, that number is somewhere in that neighborhood. Big number. Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> Call me small time. What's Donald Trump's connection? He, clearly, he seems like a supporter. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about it, but he, I mean, we're at his golf club right now. Yeah. I've known Donald for a long time. I played golf with him before he was president. Um, and I've done golf courses that he's bought, he's acquired, right? So his passion for the game of golf is as passionate as, a, as he's been a president where stars and stripes throw th flow through his blood, right? It's the same with golf. He loves his golf. And he sees the commercial opportunity of what golf can give him, right? Ben, Trump Bedminster is no different, right? The membership here is full. It's a, it's a commercial entity for him. It's an operation where he can, he can make some revenue out of it. So when we first started, um, obviously, as the startup, we needed venues. He had heard about it. We were in discussions with him. And we just negotiated a, a, a um, venue fee with him here. And he loves it. And he's now, in, this week, he's just been in the background, but in the foreground, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. He said he... So he's been fantastic this week. He doesn't, he, he's not putting himself out in front of Liv. He's embraced it. He, he walks to the first tee. Uh, he allows Liv to breathe, which I think is fantastic. Um, and I've been with him every day. And it's an opportunity for us because they're great venues. The players love this place. It's a great uh, opportunity for us to showcase. I just went up there and I would just walk through with 600 members through in the member section of the clubhouse. And you cannot believe the, the thank yous and the energy and appreciate what you've done here for this organization. I've never seen our boss so happy. You know, golf is this and you've done this for Bedminster and we really, really do thank you for it. It's just incredible. It's, uh, I mean, uh, from a CEO, commissioner standpoint, uh, it's it's exhausting sometimes to go around 600 people and, and do that, but it's so rewarding to hear the feedback from him. It, it actually re-energizes me, right? And uh, so I just did that before coming to see you. Craig Norman, thank you. Thank you, Tiger. Appreciate it. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.